Oh, okay. let. So just push that. Push it? What? What do you want me to do? You're going to explain. Hello? Hello. Hi. <laughs> no, I don't have a gavel, but I do have a loud voice. <laughs> and the microphone helps. So, first, I would like to welcome the residents, the volunteers, the candidates, anybody else who's here tonight for a lively and informative presentation. Uh, this is going to be a different kind of night than most of the times we have. There are three separate parts. Oh, I'm Ruth Dinowitz. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters. The League does not um, support or oppose candidates or issues. We work very, very hard for activities and political action for people to vote. Uh, we try very hard not to have someone from a district such as yours be the moderator. I come from the town of Colony. So one of my jobs this morning, this afternoon now, was to get everybody's name correct. For those of you who have not been uh, to a league run candidates nights, there are a variety of formats that we use. Tonight's format, let me tell you first because it's uh, for the second and third part. There will be no questions from the floor. So if you have questions, raise your hand, and I think there are some league people who have pencils and cards, and you can write your questions down. They have to be um, non-inflammatory. Uh, if there are some that merge together, we have some league people right over here to my right who are going to put them together, combine them. Now, I don't want to make it a too long a night, but we have, let me tell you the parts. At the beginning, we're going to have the two candidates who are running for a highway superintendent and town clerk. Oh, three. Yes. That's my first error. I just found out tonight there was three. So I hope that's only one of very few. And they're going to come up and make a three-minute statement. There will be no questions involved. Um, generally, we do it alphabetically. So when we do um, the town clerk, and the, town, the su highway superintendent, those will be alphabetically. The second part of the evening will be your town board candidates. And as you can see, those of you who are close, these are done alphabetically across so that I can kind of keep track of them easily. However, each of them makes an opening and closing statement. The opening statement by each candidate can be up to three minutes, and the closing one, two. When they answer the questions, they will have one minute for response. Each of them has a red card, and that card can be used for one extension of an explanation or something that has been given to them. It is not a rebuttal card. We have a timer in front who will alert the candidates as to how they move along. The next part of the evening will be for your supervisor of the town, and we have two candidates they flipped a coin to have their opening and closing statements, and they will have two minutes to answer each of the questions and two red cards. Uh, the opening and closing statements by the town board members was uh, picked by lots just prior to beginning. So if you could close your cell phones and any other electronic device you might have, it's always very disconcerting to candidates to be in the middle of some kind of a statement and have one of those go off. I will check mine when I sit down. So I would like to also say that there are several groups that have sponsored today's candidate night and debate. It is the Spotlight, the Chamber of Commerce of Bethlehem, and the Capital District's churches, and the League of Women Voters. And I think that's good for housekeeping. So I will start by asking, um, we are going to start with ah, Alexa Anastasi. She is the daughter of John, who is running for the highway superintendent. 
The reason she is allowed to come and make her statement tonight is because there's been some difficulty and illness in the family. So the League has very happily asked her to come and make the statement for her father. Okay? What? Oh. oh. <laughs> As you clap, I was just advised to ask all of you to hold your applause till the end <laughs> of each section. Alexa. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Alexa Anastasi, and I am John Anastasi's daughter. The good news is I am not running for highway superintendent. However, the sad news is that my father was called away to Florida yesterday because his mom, my nanny, may need surgery. This type of surgery will require general anesthesia, and at the age of 95, this comes with many risks. For those of you who know my dad, you know where he went as soon as he got the call. His fa family and friends are the highest priority in his life, and he knew where he had to be. He wanted so badly to be here tonight, so I asked him if I could make this speech for him. He proudly said yes, and it is an honor for me to stand here in front of all you to convey my dad's message. I hope I am able to do it justice and convey the passion he has for this position. Before I start, my dad wanted me to take a moment to remember Marty Cross. Marty was the superintendent of highways in Bethlehem for 26 years. He always kept us safe and our town beautiful. Today was his funeral and the town of Bethlehem has experienced a great loss. Let us take a moment to remember all that he has done for our town and keep him and his family in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Now for my dad's statement. I may not make it through all of this, but we will try our best. I am not a politician, but rather a hardworking individual with a strong worth ethic, high morals and standards. I have lived in this town great town of Bethlehem for basically my whole life, and I am proud to have raised my family here. I have deep roots in this town. My dad was a prominent builder in this town, and his legacy and vision not only live on, but have in, been instilled into every fiber of my body. From a young age, I grew up helping to construct many of the roads and areas in this town that have now become homes and neighborhoods to many of our friends and acquaintances. It has given me great pride to watch my children, Giovanni, and Alexa, as well as my wife, Michelle, have grown to love and be committed to this community as much as me. As a self-employed individual, a person comes to know what works and what doesn't work. I know how to review contracts, purchase equipment, develop long-term strategic plans, prepare budgets, grow our intricate roadway systems with the growth of our town, and most importantly, motivate and energize our most precious resource, our employees. Equipment and supplies for our highway department are expensive. In order to properly maintain the vast highway infrastructure in our town, it requires a great deal of resources, both human and financial. In order to remove leaves, plow roads and sidewalks in a timely manner, maintain our parks, train our employees to use machineries properly and safely, it requires the proper management of all these elements, and that's what I will provide. Our prior work experience, coupled with my management experience, Working with crews and employees makes me particularly well for this position. That's good. I have to stop you. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Okay. She deserves it. She stood in front of you, the first speaker of the night. Okay. Uh, Mr. Meredith, please. Welcome, everyone, and thanks for coming tonight to this important event. I'd also like to thank the uh, League of Women Voters, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Council of Churches, and the Spotlight for hosting this event. I am Brent Meredith, and I'm serving in my first term as Highway Superintendent for the Town of Bethlehem. I've lived in Del Mar for the past 15 years. I'm married and have raised four kids here. Prior to serving as Highway Superintendent, I, served, I worked as an engineer and served as an Army officer. I had two main priorities when I started my first term. First was safety, first and foremost. Second was looking for ways to make the highway department more efficient and provide a better value to its residents. As an engineer and an army officer, safety has always been important. As a highway superintendent, my goal is to provide the safest roads I can. 
During my first term, I was able to realign some intersections and eliminate hazards and reduce vehicle speeds. Was also able with, the, with my crews in the highway department and a contractor to install about a mile and a half of new sidewalks in areas where they were really needed to make neighborhoods more walkable. When needed and justified, I added stop signs and reduced speed limits. I was also instrumental in the traffic calming efforts over in, Hav in Haswell Farms where we installed some radar signs. Those signs over the year that they've been in have reduced speeds in those neighborhoods by about five miles an hour. Uh, I've also been able to use, evaluate some anti-icing products for our snow and ice control program, and in the areas we've used them, we've reduced the uh, number of accidents significantly. Uh, we've also been able to evaluate and fix numerous drainage problems to reduce ponding and icing on our roads, and also protect our roads from damage caused by poor drainage. During my first term, I've also put a lot of effort into making the highway department more efficient and effective. Uh, last year, I was able to get GPS systems in our vehicles, making our vehicles operate more efficiently by uh, reducing idling, and also helping management by knowing where vehicles are assigned and, are they, and the work that they're getting done. I was also able to extend the hours of the compost facility and increase recycling opportunities for our residents. I've also made some changes to our leaf collection program, including adding even more temporary laborers and drivers than we've used in the past, purchasing new equipment, and prioritizing projects so that the department has the resources necessary to pick up the leaves when we need to. These results were evident in the spring cleanup where we went through the town five times in five weeks, and also in this fall where we're moving quickly through the town in, st in days instead of weeks where it usually was. Based on my experience and accomplishments in my first term and my previous experience as an engineer, I believe I'm the best choice for the highway superintendent. I built a lifetime of service to my family, to my town as a highway superintendent and a youth coach and involved in schools, and to my country as a soldier. I ask for your support in the upcoming election, and I seek to continue to serve as highway superintendent and build on the progress I've made. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moore, coming from the back, thank you. Good evening, my name is Dan Moore. I've been endorsed by a candidate for the highway superintendent of the Independence Party. I've been a 48-year resident of the town. I've been employed for the highway department for the past 10 years, and I've worked in numerous positions in the department. I've also been, I've also worked for 10 years for a U.S., for a major U.S. corporation. I've decided to run for highway superintendent as I have seen the diminishing level in quality of services, number one. Number two, the general dis discard for public safety and number three, the inefficiency and inappropriate use of department resources. In reference to my first point of services, I've been the diminished quality of both the leaves left on the road the spring, diminished quality of snow plowing. The paving projects in the town have been ignored because of poorly implemented shared service agreements with neighboring towns. Also, my second point of discard of public safety. The leaves have been left on the roadside forcing pedestrians bicycles and cars to swerve around the piles. The failure to maintain the roadways and removing the slight blocking vegetation at intersections. The potholes in the town street have made it dangerous for the passage of both vehicles and pedestrians. The poorly implemented plowing policies. My third part is regarding the mismanagement and lack of coordination of the town resources. The excessive overtime and expense of middle management personnel. The poor morale due to uncoordinated management policy implementation implications, and the disorganized scheduling of the leaf pickup, the paving season, and the plowing. As a solution, I would like to cross-train of our employees so we can be more efficient and deliver better town services, simplify and improve the management of seasonal projects and programs, and from winter straight through to fall. I'd like to implement a management strategy in order to reduce cost. As a result, utilizing both the extensive management experience I have in tenure as the Highway Department employee, and I believe I'm the most qualified and knowledgeable candidate to become our next Highway Superintendent of the Town of Bethlehem. I commit to you, the taxpayer, that I will always be honest, I will always do my best in providing those essential services, and that you deserve to be delivered the most 
effective in a in quality manner. I'm asking this for your vote on election day. I want to thank the spotlight, the League of Women Voters, and the Council of Churches for inviting me. Sorry, I'm a little nervous, but I tried. <laughs> Actually, the nice thing for me coming to Bethlehem is that you have so many highly qualified people in your town and in your school district. You're a very fortunate community. Okay. <laughs> okay, and you know all of this won't matter unless you go out and vote on election day. I say that now in case I forget later. Okay, town clerk, uh, I'd like to first ask Ms. Doomers to come and make a statement. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Melanie Domers, and I'm running for town clerk. First, I'd like to thank the Spotlight, the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce, the Capital Area Council of Churches, and the League of Women Voters for facilitating this forum. And last but not least, I thank you, our Bethlehem residents, candidates, friends, and family members for allowing me to tell you my ideas for town clerk. I have been in the administrative field for over 20 years, working both in the private industry and the public sector. I am currently employed by the New York State Department of Transportation as a secretary. I pride myself on being personable yet professional. I find enjoyment in exploring new things and helping others. I live my life according to the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done to you. I'm currently a Selkirk resident and I've previously lived in Del Mar. I have two sons, one of whom is a 10th grader in the high school, and my youngest is a sixth grader at Bethlehem Middle School. I too am a student at the University of Albany, taking courses in the evening, pursuing my Bachelor of Arts degree. Why am I running? I'm running for town clerk because I know what it is to be busy and to be short on time. What will I do if elected? If elected on November 3rd as town clerk, I will provide Bethlehem residents with TLC, technology, labor, and convenience. Technology is available now, and we should utilize it to the fullest. The only methods of payment accepted at the town clerk's office are cash and checks. I would work with the town clerks, with the town supervisors, and town board to implement the acceptance of debit and credit cards, online payments for some permits and other digital payments such as Apple Pay and Bitcoin. Many residents have expressed their frustration with the lack of payment options. Labor, I will work for you Bethlehem residents. I will not make anyone feel that he or she is an imposition. I will do whatever I can to work with you for you so that you don't need to return needlessly due to lack of effective communication. Convenience, the town clerk's office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. I will use interactive technology such as Twitter and Facebook for questions after hours via social media for those unable to come during regular business hours. Those who are working, I will make arrangements to see that we can have a mutually agreeable time, including evenings and weekends. TLC, Technology, Labor, and Convenience. As your town clerk, I will provide that. Thank you, I'm Melanie Doomers, and I would like your vote on election day. And now I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Mokrin to please come up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank the Spotlight News, the League of Women Voters, the Capital Area Council of Churches, and the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce for sponsoring this event. I am your town clerk, and I am running for my fourth term. I've worked in town hall for 12 years. The first half of those years were spent with the planning and zoning boards, gaining valuable skills that I transferred to my current office. When I began my initial term, the clerk's office was already a very professional, pleasant office to visit for the residents. 
so I concentrated on making it more efficient. I was an integral part of instituting the meeting management system that streams all board meetings live on our website and archives them for future viewing. Other efficiencies the public never sees. They include eliminating outdated processes, setting up electronic folders to share information between departments, creating an archived records database, and finding a company to recycle our paper and shred outdated sensitive documents at no cost to the town. Last year when the receiver of taxes retired before the end of her term, I was asked to combine my office with the tax department and oversee the operations of both departments until this election. I noticed that the tax department received an enormous amount of phone calls for tax payment information. There was an online system, but it was not user friendly. I had an idea of what I wanted in his place. The MIS director was able to combine the idea with the system he was implementing for the assessor's office. We now have a user-friendly online system for tax and payment information, and the phones ring a lot less. Organization, retrieval, and protection of records is the most challenging aspect of my office. I previewed a records management system at a conference and worked with our MIS director to locate a system that would work with our town's software. The system has state-of-the-art electronic document protection capabilities and features that assist in responding to the many freedom of information requ <coughs> excuse me, requests we receive. Extended hours have been suggested by my opponent. I tried evening hours and less than a handful of people came in over a six month period. It was not a good allocation of staff then and it wouldn't be now. We have four people to service two departments. Additional hours would mean paying overtime. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight I am seeking my fourth term, and I can say with confidence that I am the most qualified candidate for the position. That's the first part of our evening, and now I'd like to invite the four candidates who are running for the town board to please come up, take your seats at the designated spot. For anybody who has come in late uh, and has a, an idea for a question, if you raise your hand, somebody from the league will come. Um, these are just the beginning of the questions, so I think it will be a very nice evening. Um, although the candidates are seated alphabetically, uh, they will make their opening and closing statements based on their lot picking. So I'd like to first ask Mr. Harrington to come and make his opening statement. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I'd also like to thank uh, all the uh, representatives uh, who uh, went through all the hard work of putting this on tonight for us, uh, bringing you people out to uh, hear what we have to say. Uh, my name is Dave Harrington, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm 51 years old. I live in Glenmont with my wife, Mandy. Uh, I'm agent with Miranda Real Estate Group. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Bethlehem. We have t been blessed with two wonderful children, Shana, who works at Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, and our son, Jordan, who's also in law enforcement. My parents, Nelson and Don, who both retired from the Bethlehem Central School District, still live in the house on East Fernbank that I grew up in, and my brother, Dennis, and his family also remain local. I spent most of my adult life in public service, as a senior at Bethlehem Central High School, I joined the Delmar Fire Department, where I served as a firefighter and advanced EMT, logging many hours responding to community emergencies. At the age of 21, I began my career in law enforcement, serving the residents of Albany County and Bethlehem for 28 years, with the final seven here at Bethlehem, in family services, serving as a school resource officer and DARE instructor, educating over 5,000 of our children on the dangers they face in life. Retiring in 2013, I continued to build our family business, Specialized Canine Detection Service. It's a business where we use narcotic detection dogs 
uh, to assist families, businesses, and schools with the ever-growing drug problem in our communities, we currently operate with three nationally certified canines. Following the encouragement of my family and friends, I decided to continue providing service to the community by running for town board. My many years of employment with the town have left me well prepared for this job and the challenge it's going to present. Including Mr. Clarkson, I have worked in this town for eight different supervisors and I know what works and what doesn't work. Public safety has always been a priority of mine, as you can see. Other topics of focus that come up, diminished town services, which you hear about the leaf and the snow removal. These also go to the safety of our motorists, our biking and walking public. I'm also dissatisfied with the disconnect uh, that has developed between some of the residents and town hall. We need to return to a truly open and transparent government with responsible leadership where people can feel comfortable with voicing their concerns and feel they're being listened to. If elected, I assure you that I will facilitate implementation and success in these areas, among others, and vow to always be approachable to all the residents of our fine community. I've always been involved with and well connected to the town and its operations. Any reservations I had about taking this important step were put to rest when I met Jim Foster, who was willing to put his career on hold to serve our community as well. We share a vision for a better Bethlehem. I have to stop you now. Stop has been up a while. And I thank you, really. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't see the red card there. I apologize. <laughs> Mrs. Zagrosa, you're next. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors tonight for putting on this wonderful event. I appreciate the opportunity to hear from the residents and to get to share some of my ideas and concerns this evening. Um, I live in Glenmont. I, am, I live there with my husband. We have four children, two in middle school and two in high school. That makes us very active in the community. Uh, we are involved in the Bethlehem Soccer Club. We are involved in Pop Warner involved in St. Thomas Church and in the PTA as well. Um, I served as president in the Glenmont PTA, and um, prior to moving to Glenmont, um, I lived in Gilderland, and I served as PTA president for Altamont School District as well. But community involvement gives me a very unique perspective, I feel, on um, town services and community groups. And I think it's very important that we incorporate our town services to work in tandem with our community groups whenever it's possible. Uh, a cooperative working relationship is what I would hope to establish with our various community organizations and um, our town services. Um, they should complement one another is what I think, like our YMCA and our town parks and our school field use. That should be something that we can really coordinate for the best for our youth. Um, and improved youth services is one of my big goals. They are the future of our world, and I think we should all be working actively to provide the best opportunities we can for them. Service is a big important thing. It's very important to me, to my family, um, and it's very important to this town. We've heard a lot so far about service in the town, um, about the dwindling services that people have felt have happened over the past year, the leaf collection, uh, the different hours at the compost facility that weren't particularly helpful. Um, my thing was snow removal. I thought there was a big safety issue with snow removal in front of the middle school for our children when they have to walk to school. Um, we've all felt those effects, and I think that we can all work much harder to have a streamlined effect where safety is our priority and where we are working together to provide the best environment for Bethlehem. We need to uh, restore that services. We need to open up communications. We need to make everyone feel appreciated and make everyone feel like they have the opportunity to come and speak to the board and hear where they will be heard and their concerns will be addressed. And that is something that I think I could offer very well. Um, I think we need to be cognizant of the development that's going on in this town too. And I think we also need to be aware of our open spaces and keeping that 
and protecting that because that's also very important to me. Um, so I would just like to thank you for this opportunity to speak tonight and I uh, look forward to your questions. Mrs. Becker. Good evening, everyone. I want to take a moment of time to thank the members of the Chamber of Commerce, the Spotlight, the League of Women Voters, and the Capital Area Council of Churches, as well as all of you residents of the community who are here tonight to listen and to support all of us. My first challenge is to keep this at three minutes, a challenge that anyone born in the South knows is quite a challenge. By way of introduction, I am Joyce Becker, a choice for the town board. I was born and educated in the state of Kentucky, lived in Lexington, that can't talk either, lived in Lexington, Kentucky, Chicago, and Boston. What brought me to Bethlehem? In 1978, two opportunities opened for my family, one in Palo Alto, California, and one in Albany, New York. Many days during those winter months, I must say that I think about what would life have been like in California. In 1978, Clifton Park was an exciting new place to live for young families. Lots of shopping, promises for new growth, a tempting living choice, but I was looking for a community with strong roots. My realtor steered me to Bethlehem by sharing with me that Bethlehem offered an approachable town government, a progressive library, an established high-ranked school system, and a police force committed to serving the people. I am proud to say that I do love New York, and I am pleased to call Bethlehem home. In 1986, I was hired by the town of Bethlehem to insist in forming a new department, Senior Services. A major part of my job was to recruit and train a volunteer corps to assist with service provision. In June of this year, I retired from the town as Director of Senior Services, a model program, a teaching program for you, Albany, also a teaching program for the Bethlehem Central High School. And that program serves the needs of older adults as residents, as well as the youth of our town. I served under seven administrators, seven supervisors, with three different party affiliations, through financial good times and times of struggle. I managed to keep the budget department at one and a half percent of the overall budget by seeking alternative funding and resources for programs. I'm in a second term as trustee of the Bethlehem Library, and as part of this board, we managed to keep the operating budget <clears throat> within range while accomplishing long and short-term goals. I feel I will be accessible to the community and be a connection between town residents, town employees, and town government. I feel committed to keeping Bethlehem the best place to live in the Capital District. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Van Leuven, please. Good evening. I'm David Van Leuven. I'm excited to be running for town board. This is the first time I've ever made a bid for an elected office, and uh, it's been a, a wonderful and challenging experience. Uh, it, I had no idea what I was getting into, and I'm certainly glad that I did, regardless of what happens on November 3rd. Um, in my opening statement, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, you know, introduce who I am, talk about my qualifications and why I'm running, and then I'm going to leave most of my platform issues until the end rather than going over it twice and then throughout the, uh, the, the course of the question and answer session. Um, but I'd also, uh, like everyone else, like to thank the Spotlight, the League of, Win of Women Voters, the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce, and the Capital Area Council of Churches for bringing us together. This is really the only opportunity people have to see the four candidates together and to compare and contrast um, our, our different styles and demeanors and perspectives. And I think that's a very valuable thing, um, especially in a local election. Now, I'm a working parent. I uh, have three great girls. Uh, my oldest daughter, Katie, uh, is a freshman in the, Beth in the Bethlehem uh, High School. Uh, our second child came out as a matched set, and Emma and Juliet are sixth graders at the, middle, at the Bethlehem Middle School this year. Uh, my wife, Isabel, and I met uh, while we were in college, and we have, and this coming January, we will have been together for 30 years, um, and it's the best thing that happened to me. Um, we moved to Bethlehem 14 years ago when I got a job uh, with, uh, I was working with the Nature Conservancy at the time, and I got a job 
uh, running a program, $2 million budget, 24 staff that was embedded in the Department of Environmental Conservation. And as we were coming to New York, uh, we asked, where are the places in the capital region that are best to live, the best for families? Um, and everyone said Bethlehem. And when we came, we found that that was indeed the case. We fell in love with the library. We fell in love with the Four Corners Luncheonette. Uh, we fell in love with um, uh, all of the services and the variety of people that we have in town. Now, I'm running because I care and I can make a difference. Right now, I'm a strategic planner. My job is to work with government agencies and nonprofits to cut through personalities, cut through politics, cut through posturing, figure out what the issues really are, and find solutions um, that will serve everyone well. And for the most part, I'm helping people figure out how to do this much work with this much money. Now, as you're listening to us tonight, I think you're going to find that the beauty of local politics is that the craziness of federal uh, politics really don't exist. The party lines are gone. We're neighbors. The four of us, I bet, agree on just about everything. So tonight, I encourage you to look at, listen to us. Look at our, who do you think has the demeanor, the skills, and the experience to build consensus and bring, bring people together? And who do you think will fan the flames of dissension? Thank you. Okay, so I see a big pack of cards. Oh, I should have warned you, but I see you all knew. Sometimes I can't read them because the handwriting isn't good. But we do have some good questions. Uh, good handwriting, I'll find out about the questions in a minute. We're going to start, uh, Mrs. Becker will start with the first question. She'll answer first, we'll go to the end. The second question, Mr. Harrington will begin to answer and we will rotate. So, okay, the first question. Uh, did you push? And it didn't work? You, you know, women push everything twice. Okay. Oh, it works now. Oh, oh, I don't sorry. want mine on while she's speaking. I didn't know you were listening to that. Okay. It's a very nice system, let me tell you. You hear me now? Okay. Okay, here's the question. It will be the same for all candidates. As a town board candidate, have you been a participant in civic and governmental activities as well as maintained voter registration and a regular voting record in Bethlehem? Yes, I have maintained a regular voting record. I've voted in all of the primaries of the last years as well as in the general elections and will continue to do so. I'm sorry, the first part of the question is? Um, have government. you been a participant in civic and governmental activities? Well, yes, I recruited a volunteer corps of, well, well between 500 and 1,000 people and provided many opportunities for retired individuals to still have an active place in the community. And that was supported by many of our town supervisors, including Mr. Clarkson. So I've been very active in the community in that way. Thank you. I just should say to the candidates, if you don't remember the question or it's too complex, I'll repeat it. And also, you don't have to use up the exact number of minutes allotted to you in case your answer is succinct. Mr. Harrington. Thank you. Um, as I uh, had said in my uh, opening, uh, I was a member, previous member of the Delmar Fire Department and uh, Rescue Squad and uh, spent quite a lot of hours uh, doing that. I've also been involved in uh, local uh, athletics as well and community sports. Uh, I'm glad this question got answered right out because I've been waiting for it uh, because something got brought out recently about voting records and they want to talk about, I'm not really sure what they're looking for with regular voting records, but it was you know, brought out that I only voted four times in the last 10 uh, local elections since 1995. Um, and I did look at my other records as well, and, and the, you know, they only tell you half truths here. And I can't really explain why I only voted in those four, but the interesting thing is I've run into a lot of people. Um, as, as Dave said, this is not about Democrats and Republicans here. This is about people in, uh, in local community. And I see a lot of people that vote party lines. And if what you're looking for is someone to vote 10 times uh, in 10 years and vote their party line and not for the best candidate necessarily, I don't want that as community leader. I want somebody that's going to uh, voice their opposition and be a free thinker. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Van Leuven, please. Um, I have voted uh, consistently and regularly since we moved to Bethlehem, and um, we actually bring our daughters to the polls with us because we feel that voting is an important opportunity uh, to participate in uh, community and, uh, in, and in our government. 
Um, I have, uh, when we first moved to Bethlehem, uh, our power, our, we live in uh, Old Delmar, and our, the power in our neighborhood would go out at least once a month. And I organized my neighbors to uh, work together to take on a national grid and to force them to uh, fix the neglected equipment and power lines. And we won, and our power barely ever goes out now. I was also very active in uh, town open space uh, conservation efforts and in the comprehensive plan uh, reassessment. Um, for me, being actively involved in the community is the best way to ensure that um, uh, our community is uh, going in the right direction. And I've kind of had the opinion that if one doesn't speak out, one uh, forfeits their right to complain. Thank you. And Mrs. Zagrosa. Uh, yes, I have voted regularly in primaries and in general elections. I've also voted um, in school board elections, which I think is very important, as well as fire district elections. Um, I've been very involved in the PTA since, um, since I could be, since my children started school. I think that's a very important civic organization for parents. Um, I've also been involved in youth and sports groups. Uh, to promote that and to, um, I support the Friends of, a member of the Friends of the Parks to support the Bethlehem Parks. Um, and I just, uh, I, I have to agree with your statement. If you're going to complain about it, then you should do something about it. So that's my yeah. attitude. Let's see if you agree. <laughs> okay, so the next question, I'm going to begin with you, Mr. Harrington. Lucky. Well, you were the first speaker on opening <laughs> statement. Okay. Uh, what can be done to support locally owned businesses as opposed to big box stores and chain stores? Good question. Um, I think uh, working with our businesses to make them, uh, make the environment more friendly uh, as far as, you know, the walkability has been very good in this town and, and getting people to, to go to those local shops has been good. Uh, but I don't think we totally um, welcome them into our town. I think we give tax breaks to bigger places and uh, make that more attractive. It makes it harder for them to compete. I've seen a lot of good businesses uh, go, down, uh, go down the tubes because they couldn't afford to compete with these big box stores that are even in our town now. Uh, what I would like to do is I'd like to work closer with our Chamber of Commerce to see if we can uh, uh, nurture that a little bit. And uh, what I've seen is a little bit of unfriendliness, I think, uh, as it applies to our uh, Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Ah, Mr. Van Leuven, please. Thank you. I, I'm excited to see the, uh, the, the new restaurants and, uh, and, uh, that are opening in the Four Corners right now. And I think that as we look at the Four Corners, we're seeing an area that's about to hit the critical mass of really taking off. And I think that we need to do a few things uh, for this particular area. Um, I think we need to improve the sidewalks uh, between uh, the Four Corners and the CVS to make it easier for people to walk between the restaurants. And when you have people coming in uh, for that, they're going to start attending and, and uh, patronizing businesses as well. I also think we need to do more events where we draw people in so that they, from other, outside of town and from other parts of town, so that they can discover all of the great restaurants and shops that we have, and that will create an environment uh, that is more uh, conducive to new businesses opening up as well. Thank you. Mrs. DeGrasse. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. I, I said, what can be done to support locally owned businesses as opposed to big box stores and chain stores? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I think we should work with the Chamber of Commerce. Many towns around us, like Gilderland, does um, like a restaurant week where they set a price fix, usually whatever the year it is, $20.16, say, next year. And all the restaurants that can participate offer some type of menu. I think that would be a wonderful way for our community organizations to get involved and help promote our business community. I think that would go a long way to show our businesses, new and old, that we support them and we're here for them. Um, the other big thing that I think we could do is to um, take a look at that sign law. I know it was put into effect for some reasons, but I think it's done a lot to hurt local business and community organizations, and I think it should be revisited. Thank you. And Mrs. Becker, could you respond? Yes, um, when I start, first started this process of of being up here tonight, I decided that my challenge, my self challenge was going to be to purchase everything at a local business here in Bethlehem, and I was able to accomplish that. I think we could work with the chamber to attend some of the open houses when, when they have a new, and ribbon cuttings when they have a new business located here. Um, I think all of us like to eat, 
All right, so make sure that you spend time with your family, try to go out and try the new restaurants, even if it's something, a cuisine that, that's not something that you're accustomed to. Um, and I encourage everyone to do that. Okay, the third question will start with you, Mr. Van Lupen. What would you do to encourage greater citizen involvement in town government? One of the things that I liked that I've been seeing is uh, the town board and the town supervisor having open meetings uh, in different parts of town to encourage and provide an opportunity for people to come in and express their opinions, their concerns, their fears, their hopes, their ideas. I think that having that open line of communication is very, very important, and I think that the town board should take steps to do more of those um, whenever possible. I also think that as board members, we need to quell concerns when people um, are afraid to come in. Um, I've had, uh, while I've been out walking, I've had uh, quite a number of people say to me that they're concerned about, that they don't like some of the vitriolic tone that they've seen in the um, uh, police unions. Uh, columns in the Our Town, and they're afraid to say anything about it because they're afraid that it will result in, um, in a backlash. And my response is to say that's not true. We have a professional police force. We have a professional town government. They're going to serve you well no matter what you say, no matter what you think. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Rosso. Um, I think that we should um, encourage some more open forums. The town hall meetings are a good start. But a lot of times at some of the town hall meetings that I attended, it was more of a presentation style format. And I think it would be better if it was more of a Q&A where citizens could truly express concerns that they have for their town. Because what's going on in Glenmont versus Slingerlands in North and South Bethlehem can be a little bit different. And all those people should have the opportunity to ask some questions of your town board. Um, I also think that our website that the town uses is wonderful, but we could um, up, have a little better question and answer there or a little bit more interaction with town board members, perhaps we have a little online chat. Those tools are readily available and I think it would be a good way to maybe get younger people involved too. Thank you. Mrs. Becker, could you respond? Yes, I will. Um, not long ago, um, the town made it available to all the residents to be able to, to um, as a town board meeting is in process, in progress, they are able to watch that at home in the privacy of their own kitchen. Um, and that's a nice plus. I would like to see an interactive component to that where, where if a resident has a question, they would be able to, to respond as it's happening. Um, I think that technology is out there and is, is a possibility. Um, it, it's difficult. Um, people tend to not want to go out again to town board meetings after they get home from work. And we do know attendance is low. And I think we should work on encouraging any avenue we can so that people are well informed. Thank you. And Mr. Harrington. All very good points, and I agree with much of it, uh, especially uh, David starting off. Um, we do have a lot of those extra town hall mm -hmm. meetings now um, and open forums uh, where people speak. And, uh, and I think that that's great. But I think we have to do more than just say it, because the fact that we're doing it um, I've got a couple things to say about it, and one being that um, committees that are, have been formed, um, I've spoke to a lot of people that have volunteered for committees and haven't been called back. And I wonder why they haven't been uh, involved in that process and given that opportunity. And when he talks about people being scared to speak out, I understand that because when I do watch some of those meetings uh, online and the camera pans over on the side and you see town employees, I see people chuckling, telling jokes to each other while somebody's speaking maybe even snickering or rolling their eyes. And that's just downright unacceptable. And I think people take that to heart, and that's why they don't want to stand up here and talk in front of people. OK. I just was going through some of the questions, because some of them are similar. I just would like to tell you, I have some questions that were d d written here for the supervisor, and that's going to be in about another half hour. So if you can still have questions, uh, sent up to me if you would like. Uh, the women uh, from the league are here. So if something has not been to your liking, if there are some issues that you still want to have discussed, I would recommend that you raise your hand and let somebody uh, come to you with a card. Okay, so the next question will be, we'll start with you, Mrs. DeGrosso. As a town board member, what will you do to advocate recruiting and hiring in the Bethlehem Police Department that achieves gender and racial diversity? Okay. Well, 
Um, what would I do? To, could you say it one more time? Please? Sure. As a town board member, what will you do to advocate recruiting and hiring in the Bethlehem Police Department that achieves gender and racial diversity? Um, well, I would have to look into see, I would hope that there are maybe perhaps some law enforcement groups or associated perhaps with maybe the New York State Police that would have a wider group for us to pull from. Um, racially, di racial diversity, I guess perhaps we don't get that in this community, uh, applicants that way. So I would say perhaps moving out and asking for either the New York State Police to help us with our search or um, larger groups maybe pulling from the city perhaps if there would be some recruitment process that way I would certainly advocate for that thank you mrs. Becker well I feel that the most can the most qualified candidate for the position is foremost um, I don't know that people were ever denied a position because of their racial or ethnic or um, that I know of, um, perhaps the question would be better answered by why are there no more, no more, why aren't there more applicants to choose from? And I can't really comment on anything else about that. Okay. And Mr. Harrington. Thank you. I'm going to use her first th last 30 seconds to first apologize to everybody on this side. When I made that last statement, I was indicating this side because that's generally where everybody sits. I don't want to think I was <laughs> funneling them out. Um, <gasps> Joyce, I'm glad you set me up for that because, um, quite frankly, um, when I started here in 1988, I started with the sheriffs in 86. When I started in 88, this was the place everybody wanted to go. Um, they went to a place like the Albany County Sheriff where they get hired when they were 21, get some experience, and then come to an agency like this. And it was, and it was uh, a place where they live their career. Um, we've become a stopping ground where people stop along the way till they find something better because of what this agency has become. And I don't want to see that happen anymore. I am very open to hiring uh, more females uh, and more racially diverse officers. We just need to be able to attract them. They're just not coming to our door. And there's a reason for that. Okay. And Mr. Van Leuven, would you like to respond? I, I think it would be disingenuous for me to, to sit here and say that I have the answer to this excellent question. And so for me, what I would first need to do is get a, a better understanding of why the police department has the, 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 the ethnic and gender makeup that it does, why we only have, I think, one female officer um, uh, on, 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 on staff right now. I think this is an issue, though, that, that, that extends more broadly than just the police department. I think that it's very important to have a diverse workforce that can more effectively and better represent the entire community. We need to have um, racial diversity. We need to have gender diversity. We need to have um, income diversity. We need to have people from different backgrounds and perspectives to better serve the different backgrounds and perspectives and interests of the town as a whole. So I think that if we set that tenor, then we can start working down and integrate that into the hiring guidelines that the different departments employ. Thank you. The next question, I'll start with uh, you, Mrs. Becker. Okay. okay. What issue in the town concerns you the most at this moment? The issue that concerns me the most is the number of police officers right now available to work the road patrols. And I think that's something that we need to work on. We need to work on a better relationship with the police department and we need to increase our road patrols, and I think that is first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harrington. She didn't steal my thunder. Uh, again? <laughs> Not at all. Um, I, I do agree, that is important, and really, but that, what that ultimately means is what's important is you, is you the people and your safety in this community. Um, that goes to everything from crime, uh, to accidents being investigated and the safety of those there and the responders. Um, it goes to our fire departments as well. And having a greater sense of community also will get you involved in helping point out when things are going on. It's not acceptable when you see something happen in your neighbor's house and you don't think for a second that it could be something bad going on. But, but truthfully, you're right, Joyce. When, when you do pick up the phone and call 911, you want a police officer that's there. You want him healthy. You want him well-rested, or her, sorry. Uh, and, and you want them to be able to help you and be prepared to help you and have the right tools uh, necessary to provide that service. Mr. Van Leeuwen. 
I'm actually going to go in a different direction. I, I agree that the, uh, the issues with the police department are serious, and, and, and I don't minimize those in the, in, in the least. But when I talk to Mike Burbank from the police union, and I talk to, to John Clarkson, I see that as, as an issue that we can resolve and we can work through and we can fix. For me, I think the, the greatest uh, concern that I have for the town is um, uh, residential growth and how we manage it. Our town has a feel. Our town has um, uh, this wonder com wonderful community atmosphere. And it concerns me greatly that uncontrolled residential development is going to result in our town just devolving into soulless sprawl. We need to guide development very carefully so that it maintains our community feel, which contributes to safer communities, but it also it continues to attract people and businesses here because it's a, it's a great place, but we have to work to keep it that way as the future changes our town. Thank you. This is the best. Uh, Clay, this is not a political rally. Oh. <laughs> this, people are here to understand each candidate, so I request that you don't do that again and respect everyone's choices. Yes, go ahead. Um, I agree that development is a, a huge issue in this town. Um, I think we do need to take a good hard look at what is being built, um, and the number of multifamily homes that are and complexes that are being built throughout the town on every side, really. And I also think we have to um, look at our infrastructure when we look at that and say, can we support all this growth with our sewers, with our water lines that definitely need repair, and with our traffic patterns and our roadways. Can we truly support all the growth, all the moving in that's going to happen? Um, if, and if, we, if we're going to allow that to happen, then we have to take a good hard look at our infrastructure and prepare to repair it and to maintain it to sustain that growth. Thank you. Um, Mr. Harrington, we're going to begin with you this time, OK? Uh, the senior population of Bethlehem is about, I think this says 30 percent, uh, and growing. What are some of the most important considerations to best serve our seniors, and what will you advocate? Well, I think nationally we're becoming a, uh, an older uh, country, and uh, being in front of that is, is very important. And I think going back to 86 when uh, Joyce was a part of the startups, you know, certainly working with seniors, I've watched them go from one car, one van, uh, to the, the multiple ones that they use now uh, with many volunteers. And I think getting our seniors out uh, is extremely important. I've also come across some people um, while I've been walking uh, that, that provide another service as well. And, and that's, you know, we got to get these people out there. And again, with the way we're becoming very much more walkable of a community, um, we've got healthier seniors. They're getting, uh, they can get to the stores, they can walk to the stores, and that's very important. Uh, but certainly, we want to continue working with them. Thank you. Mr. Van Leuven. My grandfather uh, went blind uh, when he was 76, and he was uh, unable to see for the last 20 years of his life. But he was able to lead a really rich and rewarding life because the community where he lived had excellent senior services, including uh, a, a car that would come and pick him up every weekday and take him down to, the old, down to the senior center where he, at 90, would say he was going to entertain the old folks. I think that our senior services are, are critical to providing opportunities for our older residents to continue to live into their homes as long as they wish and to have um, active, vibrant lives that will keep them um, comfortable and safe and healthy um, un until they decide to live in a different situation. Senior services are critical for the well-being of our town in addition to youth services. I don't think we can say enough about it. Thank you. And uh, Mrs. Zagrosa. Yes. Um, I think the, what we should do for our, to uh, ensure our senior services, uh, uh, the Bethlehem Senior Projects Incorporated does an awful lot to um, supplement the senior services that are provided by the town. They pay for like two of the vehicles that are maintained uh, and they offer an awful lot of um, volunteers and time and money to help run that program. I think we should get the word out about that so that the rest of the community knows that there's an organization that they could help in. And then I think we need to fold in our youth services and let them volunteer, let them um, learn to, and work with our seniors so that they can see get that that experience and that knowledge and that both sides can benefit from the youth and from life experience. Thank you. And Mrs. Becker, could you respond? 
Yes, the mission of the mission statement for senior services is to help people live in their homes as long as possible in a safe environment. The, when I first started working for the town, w there were no options in terms of housing choices when the time has come when your loved one can no longer live in their home. Now there are three levels of care offered here in Bethlehem. Um, I, I think the town does a terrific job, and as um, Ms. the Grocer just said, they work in partnership with Bethlehem Senior Projects Incorporated, a 501c3 not-for-profit, to also expand on programs and services that are not available through town 